Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome back to Elden Ring. Today we are back once again with a new patch 1.09 to cover some weapons. We are talking the 10 best weapons of this patch and interestingly all but one of them have had some noticeable changes and actual improvements this patch. It's very interesting and we're going to go through things but it did give me an excuse to try things in the current patch and feel things out. Before we begin I just want to say these are the 10 best weapons meaning in all content. They must perform good in PvE and PvE to even be considered. With that said, let's start at number 10 at the bottom with Giant's Crusher. Yes, this weapon is the weapon that deals the most damage in one hit, and as such, it's one of the best weapons of the game. I think that's undeniable. In our current patch 1.09, Colossal Weapon scalings were improved, although this is unaffected by that technically, because, you know, you can't take an S scaling strength weapon and make it higher than that in Elden Ring. However, this weapon and weapon type has definitely benefited over the last patches where poise has become much more relevant. For example, in this PvP footage you should be looking at, I am basically using my outrageous poison hyper arm to trade infinitely with everyone. No one's really able to stagger me, and if they ever go for a trade, they just lose because I get to attack again while they're staggered. Their result is a hefty single hit, even if it's just a light attack or a nasty combination of, say, an Ash of War. Having this much poise and this much power behind a swing is obviously really powerful in PvP. In PvE, you can scale back the one-shot build and just sort of do like 5 or 6k a hit with the charged heavy attack, the unique heavy of this weapon, dealing extra damage because of that, and find extreme success doing so. It's an incredible weapon, but it has a pretty bland mood set, and it only really does one thing, bonks targets, so that's why it's number 10. Moving on, number 9 then, the Wing of Estelle, which has been improved in not one but two ways in 1.09, to my own bewilderment. This is one of the highest DPS weapons in the game, simply because if you can spam the Ash of War on a single target, stand still, it's going to deal a shed load of damage its DPS is fantastic and it's also got this incredible baseline heavy attack where you do a range attack at no FP cost like a magic range attack that costs no FP just a bit of stamina you can charge it to send out two and then you can do a follow-up where you do one or two more swings this is incredible in all content to have an infinite resource where you can at medium to close range harass or finish or chip out an enemy in PvP I cannot express how incredibly good this is or just rely on the fact that these are curved swords so they have some incredibly quick, very damaging movesets. In 1.09, the running attack speed was somehow improved when this is one of the fastest in the entire game. They also improved the recovery time, so you combo better, and they increased the first attack speed for the curved sword as a whole. So the first swing's quicker and the running attacks are quicker, and they were already bloody incredible. I don't really know why it's been buffed, but it has, and it's insane. So this is why it's number nine. At number eight above that is what I believe the best early game weapon in the game, it is Bloodhound's Fang. This curved great sword has just great damage, great early game scaling, comes with bleed, really good range, an incredibly powerful Ash of War that has iframes as part of its combination. Yeah, I just don't think it's controversial to say this is one of the best, if not the best weapon in the early game. Admittedly, it falls off a bit in the late game, but it's still good there. And in 1.09, it's been buffed. This weapon type, the curved great sword, has increased speed, increased range, increased recovery time for a variety of attacks. I was testing it in a different build where I was also using Morgoths. This is incredible. The attack speed feels just slightly better, nicer, catching people where you just wouldn't be able to. The range is confusing. Like, it was already really good, but now, like, the running attacks or otherwise, I'm hitting people where I, sh I really shouldn't be. I just don't know why they gave this weapon type more range, but it feels amazing and it's really good. So, yeah, Bloodhound's Fang. It's better than it was and it was already ridiculous. And as you can get it, like, basically the beginning of the game, it's one of the best picks to do so. Speaking of best picks, though, number seven is the Naga Kiba. One of my favorite, if not my favorite weapons in the game. A long as hell katana. I consider this one of the best weapons overall. Not just because it's an S scaling dex weapon. Not just because it's got ridiculously good range. Not just because it's got a varied moveset for wide or thrust attacks. But because of its incredible ability to basically work in a billion builds. Change its affinity to whatever you want. Run it in high occult. Run it in arcane. Run it in dex. Hey, in 1.09, you know, things like... Like magic fire and lightning these are improved too run a wide variety of ashes of war that are incredibly powerful combine it with insane weapon buffs like the blood flame blade this is the most versatile dex weapon in the game and it basically creates a shed load of build options and they buffed this this patch they increased the running attack speed and also improved the recovery time for katanas as a whole the reason this is a bob bloodhound's fang though is because it doesn't really ever fall off and your ashes of war you've got a variety of options of incredible 
incredible options at that instead of just the one with Bloodhound's Fang. At number six above the Nagakiba though, it's Moonvale. Despite all of the changes and nerfs to this, well, once was the best weapon in the game, I consider this probably the best PvP weapon in the game in terms of just the outrageous ability it has to 80% or one-shot people to this day in a moment. I hardly understand why it's still as strong as it is, but what it's supposed to do, which is deal a huge burst of damage in one single unsheathed strike, it literally does incredibly well, so stupidly well, that it's a joke if you just jump into, say, free-for-all and just walk up behind people and do it, you'll just kill them. It doesn't really take much skill at all, it's just ridiculously strong. And then it's also a katana, which, much like the Nagakiba, was buffed in the same ways, so it is technically better this patch as well. When it comes to PvE, it's still a really powerful magic weapon, which, you know, many, most enemies are weak to magic in some form. And it's true, it's not what it once was, but it's still, like, one of the best weapons, kind of undeniably. Above that, number five though we have the scavengers curved swords much like the nagakiba serve as a status building duo you can run these with so many different ashes of war so many different statuses so many different purposes and ultimately they are really quick attacking weapons they have bleed as a base on them the move set is incredible and compared to say like faster weapons like daggers they have a bit of reach to them at least and as they are curved swords yep much like wing of estelle they've got improved running attack speed and recovery time and the first attack of their combos that's faster too, which is just crazy. The curved sword was one of the best weapon types in the game, and they've made it so, so much better in this patch. So for what the scavenger curved swords generally do, which is status building, they are now better at that. They were already one of the best, if not the best. So yeah, it has to be on the list, and it's number five for me. And number four above that is another universal good weapon, but for strength specifically, it is the Great Sword, which is a Colossal Sword. Much like the Giant's Crusher, in 1.09, Colossal Swords, not just Colossal Weapons, their scalings have been improved across the board, but this was already an S-scaling strength weapon, so there's that. Much like the Nagakiba, though, it's a versatile utility weapon. You can run this weapon in so many ways. Putting people to sleep, running, say, Giant's Crusher, running Lion's Claw, trading. Over the last few patches, you know, big weapons like this, they do much better poise damage, so they're stagger machines. This weapon in particular has very wide circular swings, so they're great for AoE and catching people at range. The Crouch Poke for Colossal Swords that was nerfed so hard in the previous patch was actually made better, so it's actually viable and usable again in PvP. You can buff this weapon with greases or weapon buffs to make it even stronger for different purposes. You can run two of them in power stance and do jump attack builds. Even though that damage was nerfed in PvP, it's still outrageous just frankly this in my opinion is the best colossal sword and in my opinion the colossal sword weapon type is one of the best so that's why it's number four for me above that at number three is the dark moon great sword in 1.09 this weapon type has been buffed the great sword they've improved the speed and range of various attacks as well as recovery time to allow it to combo playing around with the dark moon today in pvp i could feel it on the basics they just feel a little bit quicker and they catch people just a little bit further and that really makes a difference for trading it's incredible now as a weapon there's not much to say about it you buff up and now you go to town with what should really cost fp but doesn't the stamina consuming wide arc magical attacks which you can charge to deal extra damage with charge attacks this is a weapon that is basically the source of the highest in single hit ranged weapon attack it's like a mini ranged giants crusher baseline this weapon type is really good the frost buildup on this weapon is really good the damage it can do with the magic is really good and then it has one of the best heavy ranged attack things in the entire game there are many ways to build this and all of them are going to be really powerful the fact that this was technically buffed in this patch is bewildering to me and I, I i think it feels great to use so what's going to be above that it's going to be the one weapon that is completely untouched in 1.09 reduvia daggers in 1.08 were made absolutely outrageous they're faster they have better range better recovery in this weapon's particular case it builds up bleed like no other weapon can, attacking so fast in power stance that you're building up to 30k damage in seconds. Its Ash of War was also improved to have damage detection on the weapon part. So if you use it at point blank, it'll be like a shotgun blaster bleed. And at medium range, you just get like a nice bit of bleed damage to help with the lacking range of daggers in general. There is a universal Ash called Bloodblade that does the same thing, but it costs health to use. For Reduvia, it doesn't for some reason. Also, comparatively, the Claws and the Fist weapon types which are similar to the dagger type they were nerfed this patch like they they made them worse claws got a bit of attack power improvements but otherwise they were nerfed across the board and yet daggers which i think are the best ones they were untouched 
Explain that to me. Redouva is easily one of the best weapons of the game. It's easily one of the best, if not the best source of bleed in the game. It's the best arcane weapon, that's for damn sure. They're insane, and it's number two on my list. And the only reason it's not number one is because Blast from a Blade exists. We have a fire weapon. And though there is one area, Volcano Manor, where fire is not as powerful as a source of damage, there are more bleed immune enemies at the end of the game than there are fire resistant enemies. Also, it's Blast from a Blade. You, you guys know this one. It's life Lifesteal on hit, lifesteal on kill. Great stats and scaling as a weapon. It works in so many builds, even if it's just on your back. The Ash of War is absolutely insane. Super long range, super wide, insane poise damage. Raw damage numbers are crazy. There's so many ways to use this weapon in different builds, and all of them should be very effective. It's basically been one of the best, if not the best weapon from the beginning of the game. I still don't know why it's got so much stuff on it, and it's just continuously seen buffs, like little buffs for its entire existence. And 1.09 changes nothing. Again, another buff. It is a great sword, so much like the Darkmoon great sword, it's got improved speed of attack. Its range is improved and recovery time's better. So it combos better. I don't think there's a more overfilled weapon with stuff and stats and powers on it. As a weapon type, it's great. As a weapon and its ability with its damage and scaling, it's incredible. So I think it's an uncontroversial opinion to say it's probably the best weapon overall in the game. But there you have it. That is my 10 best weapons of 1.09. And I think every single one of them is very understandable and should be on this list. The only thing I think would change would maybe the ordering, depending on your personal experience and opinion. Although there are many great weapons, especially in this patch, to be considered that could have shoved their way onto the bottom of the list maybe. If there's any honorable mentions that I haven't included, let me know in the comments and I'll consider it because we will be looking at a bunch of them in the future. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye